We are gathered today to mourn the passing of Catherine uh, Thompson. And we give thanks to God for her who was a mother, a mother-in-law, a granny, a relative, and a friend uh, to many. Let us call upon God in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-blessed God, we come before Thee this morning because Thou art the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. And Thou art the one who has made heaven and earth the sun, the moon, the stars, all the planets, and thou art the one who by thine own incredibly powerful word does uphold and sustain all things. Thou art the great life giver, and we acknowledge, O Lord, that thou art the one who has given us life. Thou art our creator, Thou didst know us even before we were formed in the womb. And Thou hast brought us forth and given us life. And Thou hast been with us all the days of our life. For Thy word does teach us that in Thee we live and move and have our being. And we do ask, O Lord, as we gather here this morning, that we might know and sense thy presence, that we might be aware of this occasion that we seek to do, and we would pray, O God, for thy great blessing to be upon us, that thou would help us as we would read a portion of thy word, that thou might give us ears to hear, eyes to see, minds that understand, hearts that respond, and wills that are receptive to thy will. Therefore be with us, we ask, for we acknowledge we need thee, and we can do nothing without thee. Hear our prayers, therefore we ask, O God, for we ask all things in that name that's above every name, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'd like to read one or two verses from Luke's Gospel, from Luke chapter 7 and verses 11 to 16. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city, that is Jesus, called Nain. And many of his disciples went with him and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of that city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier, and they that bare him stood still, and he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God hath visited his people. There's just one or two brief things that I'd like to say from that passage with you this morning. First of all, please recognize here Jesus' reaction to the bereaved. Jesus' reaction particularly to the widow. We are told, when the Lord saw her, he said, weep not, weep not. Today we are going to lay to rest, to bury a widow. 
a widow who most of her life has been a widow. Catherine Thompson was born in Govan, Glasgow in 1925. Both of her parents came from the Isle of Lewis and during the Second World War she was sent back to Lewis to live with her relatives and there she finished her secondary education. And when she finished she came back to Glasgow to work and to be with her parents. She fell in love and she married William Thompson in 1958. And then after that, a child was born, Murray. But after 12 years of marriage, she was a widow at the age of 45. Things would not have been easy for her, bringing up a young child. But she went to work and she survived and she managed and she knew pleasure. She knew that time when Murray was married to Marion and then as a result of that marriage there was two grandchildren born. One in the year 2000, Rob, and in the year 2002, Lauren. And the incident that we're looking at today is of a widow who lost her only son. Now, in the East, 2,000 years ago, a widow would look to her son to provide for her. There was no state security, no state provision for a widow. And here was a widow about to bury her only son, and possibly even this was her only child. So she was bereft of any help, and she would need to look upon her extended family, her neighbours, her friends, or the community to look after her, for no one would. But there when Jesus saw her, Jesus went right to her, and Jesus told her to weep not. Now these words may seem strange, and they would seem strange to us, but Obviously, he knew exactly what he was going to do. But the point we want to establish is that Jesus was intimately concerned with those who were suffering. Because many will tell us today that God is a God who doesn't care, who is indifferent, who is apathetic, who is detached, who is remote. But that's not the Christian gospel. That's not the Lord Jesus Christ. He is intimately and ultimately concerned. And he is concerned with people who are mourning today. He is concerned. He is one who sympathizes with those who mourn. But we notice, friends, if we notice the sympathy of the Lord Jesus Christ, if we notice his, passion, his pity, we would also notice his power. He goes to the bier. That's what was carrying the body. He goes to the bier, stops it, touches a young man and tells him to arise. And this young man came back to life. Jesus Christ showed his power over death. He was able to do something about it. Again, this reminds us about the glorious Christian gospel. That the Lord Jesus Christ is the one who has come and abolished death and brought life and immortality to light. Here we are today, we're about to bury the dead. But friends, because of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, because of what he has done, he has abolished death. He himself experienced death. He himself went to the cross. He suffered and died. He was taken down from the cross dead. He was put into a tomb, a borrowed tomb. But on the third day, he rose victorious over the grave because death could no longer hold him. And as we stand here today in this bitterly cold and wet day, we are to be reminded, friends, that the Lord Jesus Christ is the one who can save us. You see, death comes about because of sin. 
If there was no sin, there would be no death. And that's why Christ came from heaven. He came to suffer and to die, to pay the price of our sins. And those who believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, they shall know the gift of eternal life. They shall know their sins forgiven. And they shall know that death is not the end. For as he has risen, so all his people shall rise on that blessed day. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Therefore, friends, come unto him. Call upon the Lord Jesus Christ, who is able to save us. Let us close with a word of prayer and the benediction. Lord, we bless thee indeed for the Lord Jesus Christ, and we thank thee for his coming among us. We do remember those who mourn today, and we commend the immediate family to thee. And we pray that they might know the comfort that God alone can bring. We bless thee indeed for thy goodness to us, and we thank thee that there's a wonderful hope for us all in the gospel of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Be with us therefore, O God. Watch over us in the rest of what happens today, and may all redound to thy great glory. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Thank you very much for your attendance here today.